My thoughts on the state of true crime. Well, I think it's a lot different now than uh, it used to be, meaning before the media, meaning like the print media, and I guess TV media too, but you know, back when I grew up, there was only like uh, three news stations. So it was controlled more, and I, I don't think you heard as much about it unless, you know, much like today, they pick up on something that's um, really sensationalized. You know, like think of the 70s, the 80s, and, and then to the 90s when Ted Bundy was executed finally. Uh, I mean, that was a big case. But there were other cases kind of just like it, uh, but it just didn't have the, the following, the fanfare. So people gravitated towards it, I guess. But, you know, I used to get kind of angry about when I would talk about the state of true crime today. Because to me, you know, I, I guess it's more of a, an ego thing, probably, that I'm like, well, who are all these amateurs who are giving their opinions and, you know, most of them are wrong and they're doing it for the wrong reasons. How about that? That's what gets me mad about true crime. And then couple that with, you know, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, in order to get where I've gotten in life in, in the true crime community, and believe me, I'm fortunate and I'm blessed that I am a part of that and I'm, and I'm there, is that I had to, you know, work very hard, you know, uh, to get there, which means going to college, um, you know, being a Marine Corps veteran, getting hired by a police department, paying my dues on patrol, you know, before, you know, progressing through narcotics in order to finally get to the point where I was able to work on these cold cases, which was always the goal of mine and always the dream. And so I think, man, I had to endure all that, you know, two decades worth of you know, doing things I didn't want to do basically to get where I wanted it to go. And then you have these amateurs who have none of that background and they are YouTube famous or, or whatever it is. And I used to sit back and be like, that's ridiculous. You know, they, they're not even qualified to talk about these things and they're making thousands of dollars off of it. But my, my stance on that is somewhat softened because I thought, well, what if that was available to me back then before I went through all the, the trainings and stuff that I did? What would I have done? And maybe I prob probably would have taken the same route they did. Hey, they can do what they want, like their dream, to investigate kind of cold cases and mysteries and make money off of it, make a living off of it. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, again, my stance has sort of softened on that. Now, there are still some that have done it and do it for the wrong reasons. People that have criminal records and they don't care whose feelings they hurt. And, but you have that in every vocation, right? So, you know, hey, the true crime thing, it, there's good people out there in the community and there's bad people. But you have that in every walk of life. So, uh, you know, that, that's my thoughts on the true crime community at large. They're at large, great people. Um, and I'm glad to be uh, working with them and beside them. My thoughts on my influence on people, especially children. Wow, this is a tough one. Uh, I'm, to be put in that position where, you know, I have influence on people and especially children i guess it makes me want to be a better person that would be that would be the most simplest answer that i can give i want to uh if i am going to be a role model to people and i can find it kind of weird to people in the true crime genre um there's children that watch it but you know, if they do and they, they gravitate towards me 
because of my teachings, my uh, ideologies or philosophies or, or um, my certain stance on some things, then that's great. You know, um, I, I accept that challenge. I, I want to be, you know, I, I want to be. And if I'm going to be a role model for children, I would uh, certainly be held to a higher standard than I should be. And, you know, I, I embrace that. You know, if I can influence people and, you know, I do get emails and letters from people that say that I do influence them and I'm happy for that. You know, I, I won't. I won't let you down. You know, I guess that's the takeaway from that. Um, it's a responsibility. It's a big weight, but I got big, broad shoulders, so I'll, I'm okay with that. So uh, I'm humbled by it. How's that? Why my interest in old history versus true crime today? Well. Uh, I don't know. I've always been fascinated with history. Uh, when I went to college, uh, I took a Civil War course, and it really, uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, of course, it was before college where I was interested in history. I just, uh, I love history. I love artifacts from history. I would much rather, yes, you're right, I would much rather investigate uh, Billy the Kid than I would... Uh, today's true crime uh, was it Susan Morphis or Morphis I don't know the name something close to that I keep getting requests to do that but I just have no interest now if somebody says hey you want to look into uh, Johnny Ringo you know and his death but yeah I would much rather go to that scene I would love it just like anything tombstone old, old west related I would love to do Absolutely. I just have more interest in that than I do the current, like, true crime stuff. Um, Leonard Skinner plane crash. I want to go and do some detecting there, metal detecting. I love artifacts from all kinds. Someone sent me Jesse James's um, granddaughter's letter and th things like that. It's just amazing to me. And that's, I don't know, it's like a personal preference. I prefer Al Capone, old history, compared to Skinny Joe, <laughs> which is a newer mafia boss type of thing. I just prefer old stuff. Maybe because I'm old. I don't know. Undercover for the FBI. Yes, I did work undercover for the FBI. It's not a big deal. It was called uh, FBI Safe Streets Task Force, where your local police department would get assigned a an officer I was working undercover narcotics for the county one day and uh, the FBI approached me said hey we understand you do we're hearing good things about you things you do um, we would love to have you as part of our team that was basically it was a lot of a background clearance stuff I had to go to Philadelphia for a background and uh, to get a secret clearance to be able to access their databases and such it was a it was a dream come true for me. It really was. I remember because I worked out of their office for about two years, and I just remember walking into the office every day and seeing you know Federal Bureau of Investigation. And I would just shake my head, thinking, "I can't believe that I'm I'm here." Um, it was it was a great time in my life. Uh, the best professional time in my life that's for sure um, nothing but great things to say about the FBI and where I worked and my partners and co-workers uh, that I worked with undercover for the FBI what is my most fascinating criminal study well if you're talking about cases uh, I will always go back and refer back to Charles Manson and the girls especially I don't know why. He's not a serial killer. Um, you know, he may not even be a killer at all. May have killed, you know, a black drug dealer at one point in time of his life. Um, not innocent by any means, but there's a fascination there with me. And it's probably because it was the first case that I really got into when I was a teenager. 
I started looking at, at and trying to figure out how these these girls, the homecoming, you know, queen, and you know how, how they became under his spell. And then I got to have dinner and become friends with Diane Lake, who was a member of the Manson family, and she would tell me the stories and. It just fascinates me how Susan Atkins, Leslie Van Houten, Patricia Krenwinkel, um, Bruce Davis, I mean, Danny DiCarlo, there, there's so many to name Squeaky from and, and Ruth and, um, you know, Tex Watton, Watkins, Tex Watson, and there's another one, Paul Watkins, uh, how they just became under the influence of this guy. Uh, it fascinates me. I don't know why. It just does. I can't get enough of it. Um, I just want more and more and more. I went to Spawn Ranch last year when I was out to L.A. to film for a TV show. And I had a great guy, uh, Caleb, who took me on a tour there. and Just fascinating. To be in that cave. The famous Manson Cave and all those things. I don't, again, it goes back to old history, right? I just love it. And uh, I can't get enough of it. I guess on a serial killer aspect of it, again, I'll go to Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy fascinates me. I don't know why. It, maybe it was his diversity and how he played these psychological games. Um, with his victims and the police, how we change things up, how we use ruses to catch women, and I'm just fascinated by Ted Bundy. He's a fascinating case study. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. What do I consider myself? I, I consider myself a detective. First and foremost, that's all, what I always wanted to be. I didn't necessarily want to be a cop. But I had to, you know, pay your dues and work your way through being a police officer on patrol to get to being a detective and specifically a cold case detective. And that's what, what I am. And to be considered one of the best, I don't believe that. You know, there's, there's thousands of other detectives who don't get the publicity that I get um, that are better detectives than me. Okay? But to be considered by many, including Warner Spitz, uh, who said that nice quote about me? Yeah, I mean, I I, I like that. Um, I appreciate it. I'm humbled by it. Um, to have this many followers is uh, and fans, and you know, it's great. I I love it. I embrace them. But first and foremost, I'm a detective, and I always will be. You know, when I first started out into this, you know, endeavor, it was like, what am I going to be? What's my title going to be? You know, like people were out there that were forensic scientists, forensic criminologists. I was like, oh, that's catchy. You know, I can be, that's what I'll, that's my title. Um, yeah, academia, you know, I, you know, I went to college, got a degree, started my master's degree. I was like, yeah, that's the route I want to go. And then I'm like, Kenny, why, why, why is a title important? It's not. It's who you are. It's what you do. And then I realized it's, it's as simple as this. I'm a detective. Period. End of story. And that's my title.